Hello everyone, I'd like to let you know about my forthcoming online retreat at home uh, titled The Essence of Meditation beginning on June the 30th. Uh, the weekend will uh, consist of a series of uh, guided meditations in which we will explore the essence of meditation and also there'll be plenty of time for conversation and questions. So uh, there are uh, essentially three types of meditation. Uh, the first, which we could call uh, meditation on an object, is sometimes referred to as the progressive path where we give our attention to an object of experience, such as a, a mantra, a flame, the breath, the pause between breaths, a deity, a teacher, and so on. And then the second type of meditation could be called meditation on the subject. And in this case, the mind, as it were, turns around uh, away from the objective content of experience and travels backwards or inwards towards the the subject, the, the source of attention. And this is sometimes referred to as the direct path or self-inquiry. And then there is a third type of meditation uh, which requires no uh, directing of the attention either outwards towards an object or inwards towards the self. In fact, there is nothing for the attention to do. It is simply being. Strictly speaking, it should not be called meditation if by meditation we, we understand either an activity of the mind or the cessation of the activity of the mind. This third type of meditation, which is really non-meditation, simply being, has nothing to do with what is or is not taking place in the mind. It is simply abiding in and as being, which lies prior to and is independent of either the activity or the inactivity of the mind, remaining simply as we are prior to the arising of experience. In the first two cases, meditation on an object or meditation on a subject, these are activities that we do, whereas this third type of meditation, the essence of meditation or non-meditation, uh, meditation is, is no longer something that we do. It is simply what we are. It is the natural condition. Uh, prior to the arising of experience and uh, remains present as the background of all experience. So I hope that some of you will be able to, to join me uh, during this weekend when we will explore uh, not so much uh, meditation on an object, but we will certainly explore uh, this direct path or self-inquiry meditation on the subject and more and more non-meditation, simply being. So I, I thought that I would read you a couple of passages from uh, Jean Klein's book, The, the Book of Listening, uh, in which he speaks about this uh, non-meditation. As long as there is any residue of a meditator or something meditated on, then you make meditation an activity of the mind. But every activity is a contraction. Meditation is not an activity of any kind. So here he's, uh, uh, Jean Klein is suggesting that true meditation is not really an activity or even the cessation of the activity of the mind. That every such 
activity is, is a s- subtle contraction or effort of the mind and is, as such is the very opposite of true meditation. In true meditation, there is neither something to meditate on nor a person that meditates. There is just pure meditation, which in the absence of an object and a subject is simply being. And then he goes on, feel yourself vertical, but don't try to make yourself vertical. This is Jean Klein's way of saying, uh, be only being, rather than focusing your attention on an object or tracing your attention back towards the subject. Both of these happen on the horizontal line of time. He says, feel yourself as vertical, know yourself only as being, not as doing. But don't try to make yourself as such. That would take you into a a state of becoming. It would perpetuate doing. It would keep you on the line of time. He's saying, no, rest in the vertical dimension of being, as being. When you feel that you are vertical, you are in the timeless. All action is on the horizontal plane, the the timeless being, as opposed to the, the horizontal dimension of time, where we are constantly in a state of efforting, becoming, doing, achieving, seeking a goal through meditation or some other means. Uh, so he's suggesting that when we, when we come to the vertical dimension of being, we, we step off the horizontal dimension of time. We are, we are in the timeless. And then he ends by saying meditation is where time and the timeless meet in the heart, but by which he, he means that meditation takes place at the intersection between the vertical dimension of being and the horizontal dimension of of doing at at that intersection. That intersection is what we call now. And from the point of view of the mind, now is a moment in time. It is a point on the horizontal dimension of time. But from the point of view of being, now is not a moment in time. It is eternity. So in non-meditation, resting in and as being. We stand at that placeless place where the vertical dimension of being and the horizontal dimension of becoming uh, intersect. We stand in the timeless. We stand in eternity. And then on another occasion, Jean Klein goes on, the word meditation is very often taken in many directions, by which he means either the numerous directions towards objects of experience, towards a mantra, the flame, the breath, a deity, and so on, or the direction, the inward-facing direction towards the self, the subject, the source of attention. Uh, However, he goes on in meditation, there is not a meditator and nothing to meditate on. There is no subject of meditation. There is no object of meditation. As he says, there is only meditation. When there's something to meditate on and when there is someone to meditate, he says this object of meditation belongs to the mind. Only a mind could conceive an object, uh, a mantra, a flame, the breath, and so on. And when when you see this, but you always come back to what you already know, that is the object that you already know, then there is a disappearing of the meditator and the object of meditation. And what is left is a current of love. So he is suggesting that when the subject and the object of meditation dissolve, then all that is left is is being, timeless being, whose nature is love. And he goes on, meditation is what is behind all activities. You will first discover it in the silence between two thoughts or two perceptions. You will discover it before going to sleep 
and before the body wakes up. These are moments of oneness. But this oneness has nothing to do with the presence or absence of activity. It is here from moment to moment. It is beyond the three states of waking, dreaming and sleeping. It is. He might have added, I am. These three states are superimpositions on this current of being, which we all have in common. There is nothing special in it. And I like this passage particularly because of this last sentence. These three states, the three states of waking, dreaming and sleeping, are superimpositions on this current of being, on this background presence of being that we all have in common. Not just those relatively few of us that are interested in spiritual matters, but all eight billion of us, all eight trillion of us, if we include all the animals. This fact of simply being or being aware that is the essential nature of everyone. It's not something special. It's not something that only a few enlightened sages have privileged access to. It is the, the being that each of us refers to when we say simply, I am. And the I am is present in all our experiences. When we say, I am upset, the I am is shining there. When we say, I am walking down the street, the I am is shining there. When we say, I am tired or lonely or afraid, in each of these statements, the I am is shining there. Even when we are deeply depressed, we say, I am depressed. The I am is shining there. Only we normally give exclusive attention to the, the activity or the feeling or the relationship that qualifies the I am. So when we say, I am lonely, we, we emphasize the loneliness and we neglect the I am. When we f say, I am cold or tired, we emphasize the coldness or the tiredness and we neglect the I am. When we say, I am depressed, we emphasize the depression and neglect the I am. In meditation, we simply emphasize the I am at the expense of our experience. We, we, we neglect or relax the focus of our attention from the depression, the loneliness, the anxiety, the fear, and so on. We just emphasize the I am. We have no agenda with the feeling. We don't try to get rid of it. We don't try to change it. We just magnify the I am in all experience. And, and this, this brings being, as it were, out of hiding in the background of experience. And it begins to flow into the foreground of our experience, uh, pervading it, infusing our experience and pervading it with its innate peace and, and quiet joy. And then one final passage from Jean Klein. He says, you must become free of the meditator. This is a very deep saying, make it your own. There is no meditator. There is only meditation. The mind can be still without trying to be still. It is only in your absence that there is stillness, presence. In the absence that you are not, there is presence. But it is not an objective presence, this presence. It is a double absence. And when you have it, you don't move away from it. At the slightest motion, you go away from it. So again, this, this emphasis on the essence of meditation being free of both the one who meditates and that upon which we meditate. There is, uh, and this absence of the subject or object of meditation leaves us in non-meditation, simply being. And this abidance in being brings about a, a natural, effortless stillness of the mind. 
not a, a stillness that has been brought about by controlling, discipline, focusing the mind. Uh, a stillness of the mind that is just the inevitable consequence of resting in and as being or presence. He says, it is only in your absence that there is stillness, presence. In the absence that you are not, there is presence. But it is not an objective presence, this presence. It is a double absence. What does he mean by this? He says, it is only in your absence that there is stillness. This is the the absence of yourself as as a separate subject of experience. In this absence of yourself as an apparently separate self or ego, there is stillness, presence. And then he again qualifies this statement about presence, saying that it is not, um, it's not an objective presence. So it's the, the absence of yourself as a person, but also the absence of any objectivity to the presence or the being that you are. And this is why he says it's a double absence. It's what they refer to in the in the Sufi tradition when they say uh, the passing away of existence and the passing away of that passing away. It's this double absence. And then when he he ends by saying and and when you have it, you don't don't move away from it. It reminds me of Meister Eckhart when he says, when you come to the one who gathers up all things into itself, there you must stay. So this is really the essence of meditation or non-meditation. Coming to the one which gathers all things into itself and remaining in that, as that. So I hope that uh, as many of you as would like to will uh, join me for this online meditation retreat at home starting on June the 30th. Also for those of you further east in Asia, Australia, New Zealand, we've added uh, a couple of sessions Um, in the early morning, or at least in the early morning UK time, so that's a a friendlier time for you in the East. You don't have to get up at four o'clock in the morning. So I hope that that will enable uh, more of you uh, in in Asia, Australia, New Zealand, and so on, uh, to join us during this weekend. And if, uh, for financial reasons, uh, you're not able to to um, afford the, the, the ticket price, please just write to the organizer. You're welcome to come uh, either at a reduced rate or for free. So the details are all on my website and just write to the organizer if, if that is the case. Either way, I look forward to seeing some of you then.